Respond to the voice of God. That's right. And then do what the voice is telling us to do. Do what the spirit that is in us is telling us to do. We're missing it. Mm -hmm. right. Listen, nobody is going to be perfect. That's right. I'll never be perfect. No pastor, no man ever in history will ever be perfect. Only Jesus. Only Jesus will. <laughs> But what we can do is fall at his feet and say, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. And listen to what the Spirit has to tell us. Listen. Our, the question today is, are we hearing him? We were talking in the youth group the other day, and I gave the example, which I've given many a times. Um, if I ignore my wife every day. But here's, here's another, another thing. The, the, the analogy goes, if I ignore my wife every day, my wife is going to be pretty angry at me, right? She's not going to be happy with me, right? She, it's not going to be a good relationship. Here's the other part of that. If I come in and all I do is whine about my day and yap and yap and yap and talk and talk and talk and I never listen to her, Ooh. I think I just struck a couple nerves. If I never take the time to listen to her, I'm not making her feel loved either. Now, the heart of a Christian is not to do what's right and just do the, the letter of the law. The heart of the Christian is, the true Christian, is to know the heart of God. See, the story of the Bible is a story of love, and it's a very interesting story, right? You heard me preach that one time before. I hear a lot of people say, well, Pastor Aaron, there's a lot of killing, there's a lot of other stuff that's bloody, and I said, no story is boring. Come on. No story is boring, and, and it's a story of the perfect love of God through sinful, terrible men and women that throughout history, even despite all of our families, His love is perfect. Mm -hmm. It knows no bounds. It doesn't have any problem breaking right through everything that we go through. His love truly is extravagant. Yes, it is. It truly is extravagant. Amen. He loved us so much that he gave his only son. Can we take the time to learn to hear his voice? Hmm. To get in that state of worship and then listen. When the word is spoke, it's not just a book. That's right. It's not just a story. It is the love of God. It is Him speaking to us. When we know the Word of God, when we know 
what it says and why it says it. And we will always be learning and we will never get all of it. That's right. Ever. Doesn't matter how long you do it. Even uh, Billy Graham. Doesn't matter how long you've done it. And even he would have said this. We're never going to learn enough. We're never going to know enough. But we can learn to listen to his voice. Amen. That's our saving grace, guys. Yes. In John 14, verse 26, I'll give you a second. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Now, uh, somebody, we, we were making a fun, I think it was Coach, Coach Lowey. We were uh, talking and, and we were talking about memorizing Scripture. And one of the youth group said, man, I don't know how to, to memorize all of this. And I said, you know, I probably throughout my life in this church with Marsha and Joni and, and a lot of the others have memorized at least a quarter of the Bible, I feel like, through all of the classes that we were in. We had memory verses every week, Royal Rangers. And, and one of the kids said, well, do you remember them? Well, <laughs> well. Well, and, and here's what I said. Let me put it like this. When you put the Word of God in your heart, the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance. Amen. Now we should all strive to memorize these things, and Pastor Hood is a great example of that. Yes. Yeah. That man can quote the Scripture like few others that I've seen. Mm -hmm. And he can give you verse and chapter right there where it is. And we should, we should want to be that way. But don't feel bad if you aren't. Okay? Don't feel bad if you aren't. Still, don't, don't look at that and go, I'll never do that. I'll ne I never. That's okay. Read the Word. Read the Word. Because here's what will happen. You'll be going through your life. You'll be going through, maybe you're going through trials. Maybe you're going through a really great time in your life. Maybe you're on a mountaintop. Maybe you're in a valley. But the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, will put a scripture in your heart. Bring remembrance. You'll be talking to someone on the street. You'll be evangelizing to someone and you don't even really know that you are. You're just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will bring a scripture to your mind. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> he can't bring that scripture to your mind unless you do your due diligence in knowing the word. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit leads, who would like to see healings, blind eyes open, yes. lame men and women jumping up and down. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Amen. That yes. is the power of Christ. Amen. The power that opened up a grave. The power that opened up a grave, Amen. people. Three days laid in a tomb. All prophecy was perfectly, perfectly fulfilled. Yes. To a team. Yeah. And he walked out of that grave. That power is the power that we have been given. That we are to steward. Not just a pastor, not just a leader, not just people who study and everyone. If you have given, like the song we were singing, I surrender. If yes. you've surrendered to Christ, if you have surrendered, did you really know what you were doing? What, right. Did you really know <laughs> what that meant when you said, I surrender? I never thought I would be on this stage <laughs> preaching to you. I never thought I would have went to California. I also had no idea I would have found the love of my life. And there she is right there. <laughs> I never, I never would have ever in my wildest dreams thought this life. <laughs> but how great is our God. Amen. 
And I had to learn. And, and a lot of us, most of us, learn the hard way, and that's okay. That's okay. But the point is to continue to move forward, surrendered to Him. Yes. Amen. Don't lean onto our own understanding. That's it. And it's hard yep. because, man, it would be so great if I didn't have any debt and I was making six figures and things were just even and, and right and, and the way I thought that they should be, right? Everybody said amen, right? Come on, it would be great. It would be great, you know, if it went to my plan. If I do this, if I do that, if I do the other thing, then ah, it'll work. But there's no fulfillment. You felt the Spirit in your heart. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have felt Him in your heart. Nothing else will fulfill you. That's right. If you try to walk away, there's going to be a gap. You can try to fill it with anything else you want. <laughs> Nothing can fill that except Jesus. Amen. And he might call you to go to China. He might call you to go evangelize in India. He might call you to downtown Detroit. He might call you to New Haven. Yes, amen. And it won't make sense to you. Yeah. I can't stress this enough. It will make zero sense. It will make zero financial sense. <laughs> it, it will make zero sense in a lot of different ways. Yes. But you'll know it's what's right. Amen. But you'll only know if you've written the word on your heart. Yes. And you're listening to the Holy Spirit. His sheep know his voice. That's it. There was a video on Facebook. Some of you may have seen it. Um, it was a video, I'm not sure where they were, in like the Swiss Alps or something. And there was this tourist group, and there's a bunch of uh, sheep up on a hill, kind of way off. And the shepherd had told the people, try to call the sheep over, try to call them over. And all of these different people, they were doing the exact same call that he does. And they're trying to call these sheep over. They're trying to call them, and they're just ignoring them. Everybody in the little group goes, and then the shepherd steps over the fence. And, you know, and he does the same thing, every single one of them. I'm talking from a long ways off. Every single one of them came right around him. And everybody freaks out, whoa, that's crazy. That's, that's why he gave us that example. That's right. That's why he gave us that example. We are to know his voice. Yes. If we want to see blind eyes open, if we want to see lame people made whole, limbs grown back, cancer healed in Jesus' name, Amen. if we want to see that, it's going to take commitment to knowing the voice of God. You don't just walk into that. That's right. Sorry. You don't, you don't just walk up and go, um, you have cancer? Yeah, but you have Cancer, I guess. <laughs> you hear the Spirit. You feel Him in your heart. You feel Him in your being. Yes. And something will pull at you that you cannot deny. That's right. It will make you so uncomfortable. <laughs> it will make you feel so awkward. But you do it anyway. You know why it makes you feel awkward? Because it's not you. That's right. Simple answer. It's not you. You're hearing and feeling the Holy Spirit pull at you. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Amen. Romans 8, verses 1 through 18. I'll give you a second there, too. And I might pause a few times in the middle here because there's a lot there. Romans 8, verses 1 through 18. All right. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit is life in Christ. In Christ Jesus, sorry, Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law and death. Let me read that one more time. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me from the law of sin, free from the law of sin and death. Free from the law. <laughs> Thank God for that free. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank God that there's a free right there. Amen. Because if it were the law, I'm a dead man. That's right. If it were the law, I am a dead man. That very first, we don't walk in the flesh, but we walk after the Spirit. Amen. That is the, that is one of the biggest reasons <clears throat> to be a Christian. I can't do it. I can't figure it out. I can try to put all the pieces together. I can try to fit it all the way that I feel like it should be. And no matter how hard I try, no matter how good I get at it, no matter how successful I might even be at, it won't amount to a hill of beans. Unless I walk in the Spirit. That's it. You remember when Jesus was walking and there was a tree and it didn't bear fruit and Jesus said to the tree, wither up. He heard the Spirit, He is the Spirit. He knows the Spirit. There was no question in Him. He was God. There was no question in Him or the power that He held. Now all the disciples said, oh, and then they came back and they seen that it had withered up. Oh my goodness, this is a great miracle. If you had faith but a mustard seed, you could tell that mountain to move. <coughs> But a mustard seed. Do we really believe he can do it? Yes. Listening to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> it, it cannot be stressed enough. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So what that is saying is that God sent Jesus in the likeness of a sinful man. Even though he wasn't, it's the likeness of a sinful man. And because of that flesh, there is no sin for those who follow him. We can still sin. Mm -hmm. but it's forgiven. Amen. Yeah. We still have to listen to the Spirit. All right. Hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, yes. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. Because the carnal mind is eternity against God. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. Eternity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There you go. Have you felt like 
your relationship with the Lord maybe is a little, is there something in your flesh that's getting in the way? Yeah. Is there something that's there that the Lord has said, I need this to move, not because of the law, but because I want to be closer to you, right. and you just don't want to give it up? We've all been there. We've all been there. Okay? But if we don't get past there, therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Mm -hmm. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean when we say we are crucified with Christ. I let the old man die. That is exactly what that means. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. This is important. Let me read that one more time. <laughs> but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Are you looking for healing this morning? He will quicken your body by the spirit that dwells within you. Amen. He will quicken your mind. He will quicken your body. How? By in here. That spirit, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. God, it's so good. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. That means if you hate the deeds of the body. It didn't say that if you're perfect... And if you do everything right, and if you never make mistakes, then you shall live. No. I've made plenty of mistakes knowing full well that I was making a mistake. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. right. knowing full well that what I was doing was wrong. The point is that we have to come to the point where we hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Where we mortify the works of the flesh, where we war against the sinful nature. And we say, you know what? And, and Paul said it. The things that I hate to do, I seem to do. And the things that I know that I should do, I seem to not be able to sometimes. I mean, come on. It's the human condition. The point isn't that we be perfect. The point is that we learn to loathe the things that keep us from Christ. Mm -hmm. We will always struggle because we are sinful, sinful people. Only saved by grace. Thank God for that grace. This is an explanation of how that grace works and can be applied to our lives. Are, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. This is an explanation of that grace and forgiveness but how we take it to the next step of just not, Lord, please forgive me. But Lord, teach me to hate the sin that I know that I commit. <clears throat> teach me, Lord, help me to know you so well and love you so much that I loathe the fact that I still deal with this sin. And guess what? Eventually, if you hate something, it will work out. That's the working out of our faith. It, you'll mill through it. Everybody has to in one way or another and some things are in the 
<clears throat> but we have to learn to hate that sin. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. For as many are led as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Mm. You haven't received bondage to fear. So if there's something binding you, if there's fear that's crippling to you, listen, there is no Righteous fear, except for the fear of God. That's right. <clears throat> there is no righteous fear. That's the, um, quick side note. That's one of the biggest traps of the enemy. Sometimes he'll say, make, make you think, well, it's good to be fearful of that because it helps you protect them. Well, it's, it's good to be fearful of this because... All fear. Let me set the record straight. All fear is from the enemy. No fear is justified or good except for the fear of the Almighty God. Mm. <clears throat> that is it. No other fear. Fear of being alone. Fear of having to deal with people, fear of death, it has no sting. It has no sting. All of the fear cast out in Jesus' name. Amen. Cast it out in Jesus' name. <coughs> there is no condemnation. There is no need to fear in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. <coughs> Think on that for a second. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. The Spirit of God, the Almighty King, the Creator of everything on this earth and outside of it, everything, period. His Spirit, it communes with mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a great God we serve. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with Him, that we may also glory be glorified together. That's kind of a rough one to hear. If so, be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. The Lord wants to bless you. The Lord wants you to succeed. The Lord wants to give you good gifts. He wants you to prosper. <laughs> but when the things come that are hard, when the trials and tribulations hit, He wants you to lean on Him. Now a lot of us have, are in here are either married or in relationships. And if you're not, I'll pray for you. <laughs> but the Lord bring the right one across your path, okay? <clears throat> but when you're in a relationship, you learn a lot more from the hard things that you go through hmm. than you ever will floating on the cloud of happiness. <laughs> okay? Happiness and joy, it's great. But the joy of the Lord passes all understanding. That's right. mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means even when my world is falling apart, even when everything that I know to be good falls in on me, and the kidney stones hit, and I break an ankle, and all these... Okay, a little personal. <laughs> but, but when all of those, that's 
where the proof is in the pudding. Yep. Right. Anybody will serve somebody who thinks that they're going to have, you know, big old diamond rings on their fingers and fancy clothes on their backs and the nicest car to drive. Will you serve the Lord? That's right. Even unto death. He did it for you. Yep. He did it for you. Would you do it for Him? Yes. If it really came down to it? Yes. Would you do it for Him? <coughs> and, and I'm not just saying it at you. I say it to myself. All the time. All the time. Like Bruce, you were saying earlier. Man, if, if it's not end times, it's got to be close. Okay, okay? it's got to be close. Are we willing to do what we need to do and take what we need to take? Do we know Him well enough? Have we heard His voice well enough? Uh, the way to train our hands for battle, okay, the way to train up our spirit man is to hear the voice of the Lord. Is to know His Word. Understand that He can do anything. Believe it. And listen. And when He speaks, do it. Look like a fool if you need to. That's some of our hardest thing to get through. What other people may think. That's another form of bondage. No. That's fear. You're scared of what others may think. That's fear. I already talked to you about that. I won't repeat it again. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. Even the hardest times, even the biggest tribulations and trials, they don't even compare. They don't even come close to the glory that God has planned for you. It does not even, it's not even a speck of a thought to mention all of the hardships that you've gone through when you compare it to the glory that the Lord wants to bring you to. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, He wants to bring you there now. He wants you to be so sold out for Him. And give it all up. Surrender it. And when you surrender it, He'll show you the glory He has planned for you. He's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do it what He wants you to do. We're not robots. He's not going to force it upon you. But let me tell you, and, and I'm not big on saying this either. You should know that. If you don't listen to that spirit, you're missing out. It's going to be really awkward. It's going to be really strange. It's going to feel really out of the ordinary. It is going to make you want to crawl up in a ball and just suck your thumb. Okay? It's true. It's true. Because it's not you. It is against your fleshly nature. It is against what we feel like. We get all awkward. I don't want to say that to somebody. I don't want to do that. But then we come and then when we're with other believers, we're like, yes, the Lord is going to do wonderful things. <laughs> He's going to do wonderful things. Yes and amen. And listen, I'm preaching to myself too. We have to be willing. Yes. We have to know who He is. Yes. Know His Word. Yes. Listen and develop our ear. Yes. Wyatt, Bruce, mm -hmm. when you learn music, you have to develop that ear. You have to develop to hear the different things. You don't just get up on stage and play like Jimi Hendrix, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't just walk up and go, ah! <laughs> Obviously, you know, that's not how it works. You have to develop your skill. You have to develop the ear to hear these things that are to be played. <clears throat> if we don't hear and, and really pay attention to 
The voice of the Lord. There's another voice that will get louder. Mm -hmm. yeah. The voice of insecurity. That's mm -hmm. right. The voice of fear. Mm -hmm. The voice of anxiety. The voice of anger. Outside of the voice of the Holy Spirit, there is every evil work waiting for you. Amen. Waiting for you, drooling like hellhounds. <laughs> They want so badly to get you ensnared. <laughs> they want so badly to get you ensnared in that anxiety, in that fear, so that you will just do what's enough and you'll never do more. Oh, come on. <clears throat> and you'll just do what you feel is good and you'll never challenge yourself to ever do any greater. See, the Holy Spirit makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying to you today, we have to embrace the uncomfortability. Yeah. We can't hear the voice of God unless we're willing to be uncomfortable. Period. End of discussion. He is a great and mighty God. This is a stupid and dull world. <laughs> it is dull and bland. Yep. I mean, even the greatest parties you can go to end in a hangover. Okay? Oh, yeah, I talked to this girl, blah, 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 blah. It was great. It was awesome. And then I went home and I chucked. And I woke up in the morning and my head was killing me. It's boring, guys. All that this flesh can desire, it's boring. And people that are in the world will tell you that. All of these men and women that are going around partying and, and just sleeping with everybody, after a while, who cares anymore? What's the point? It's dull after a while. Might be exciting for a bit. There's no fulfillment. Where's the fulfillment? It's in the Word. It's in Jesus. It's in salvation. It's in the blood that was shed for you. Oh, the precious blood. Amen. Oh, the precious blood. Only that blood could have saved us. There's no other way. There's no other thing. And when we listen, He'll show us His glory. <laughs> Come on! He'll show us His glory. Yes. Who, who would Thank love to see? One day we all Woo. will see yes. the Shekinah glory of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, that day. Oh. Oh my goodness that day. Your eyes will have never gazed on, on anything as beautiful and as holy and as wonderful and as perfect. Hallelujah. Oh, the goodness of our God. The grace, the mercy. That's what brings me to my knees. That's what makes me not care. Hallelujah. Is his mercy. His mercy. Because to, to be an effective Christian and to hear the voice of God, we have to fully understand how lost we were without Him. Mm. Yes. How completely and utterly lost we were without Him. Yes. Without that love and that grace and that mercy, I was worthless. So who am I to hold back? Yes. Who am I yeah. to say, I, I guess... Okay. Is it over yet? The football game's going to be on soon. Uh, is he done preaching? Come on. Amen already. Amen. <laughs> hey, I don't blame you this year. The Lions aren't doing too bad. So. They're doing well. Love you, Dorothy. <laughs> okay, 1 Corinthians verse, uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. I'm going to read it to you. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> Who is in you whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. 
<coughs> Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Yes, that's right. That's what I'm meaning when I'm saying we're ignoring our partner. He's right here. Amen. That's right. He's right here. Hallelujah. He's right there. We're the temple. Yes. He lives right here. Are we paying him any mind? It makes it feel weird when you know that he's right there. You know? That's right. And you're, it should make you feel a little, I hope you feel a little awkward, okay? I do. Like, I love you, and, and I'm preaching to myself too, but we have to realize that he's right next to us. That's right. Would you feel weird if you walked by your wife all the time and didn't say anything to her? You should. You should also feel weird that you are walking by Christ in your heart, the Spirit of God, and you're not saying anything to Him. You should feel just as awkward. That's right. He's just as real. He's more real. Yep. He's more real. Luke 11, verse 13. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give God gifts, give good gifts to your children, yes. how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Hallelujah. Listen, let me read that one more time for you. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Listen, He didn't say... I'll give you a Mercedes. <laughs> he didn't say, I'll give you, you know, that, that brand new boat with the, all the fishing attachments and everything else on it. He didn't say, I'll give you 150 grand a year. <clears throat> but if you wanted to, I mean... But he didn't say that. Here's what he said. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. Why? It's better than anything on this earth. Mm -hmm. right. To know the Holy Spirit and to walk with Him is the greatest weapon, yes. comfort. It is the greatest love that you can ever experience. Have you been depressed lately? Have you felt down lately? Have you been going through trials lately? Have you just felt like your spirit just does, doesn't want to get up in the morning? Have you felt angry? Resentful, fearful, all of the works of the enemy. Have you felt that? There's only one answer. And it's the Holy Spirit that's right in you. Yeah. Now we allow all of those other things in us and it makes it hard to hear the Spirit then because it's got to get past all the fear and the anxiety and the anger and the resentment and everything else. It's got to get past all of that. We've got to cast that out in Jesus' name. <coughs> and we've got to hear the voice of God. Amen. <coughs> and then respond to the voice. I'm going to read this one, one to you. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. There is freedom. There is freedom from all your anxiety. There is freedom from all of your fear. There is freedom from every evil work that the enemy has ever done or plans to do. Yes. There is freedom. Yes. In order to have freedom, you first have to be bound. In order to know that you need freedom, you have to understand that you're bound. It's more challenging than it sounds. I know you think, like, well, if you're chained to something, you're obviously going to see the chain that's on you. The enemy's real sneaky. Yeah, that's right. He's real sneaky. He gets you with things that you don't even know. And listen, it doesn't have to be the big ones. It doesn't have to be uh, drugs and alcohol and rock and roll, okay? It doesn't have to be those things. It can be Skittles. It can be, uh, you know, looking at things that you shouldn't. It could be... Literally anything that puts itself in the place in any way of God. If anything is an idol to you, then it's in the way of you hearing your spirit, the spirit that is truly yours, 
Because you're an heir. Amen. You're a son and daughter. Amen. You're richly favored. You're highly blessed. You are loved by the Most High God. Amen. And everything in Him belongs to you. Yes. He has given it all. He wouldn't hold back. Listen, if He could get over the hurdle of giving His Son to terrible beatings, lashes, and the cross, do you think He's going to hold back any blessing to you? If He could get over that, oh, He wants to give it all to you. Yes. He wants to give it all to you this morning. Amen. All we have to do is surrender what we think is right. That's it. It's pride. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> it's pride. And we're always going to deal with it. It's always going to come up. We're always going to have to pick up our cross and walk. And to take a look at ourselves and go, is there a chain on me I haven't noticed? Is there something going on here that I didn't, I didn't recognize? That should be your first reaction. When you start to feel like there is either something holding you back, in your personal walk with the Lord? Or if you just feel like your, your outlook on life is starting to get depressed or upset, or start, start looking around. Is there a chain that I'm not, I'm not seeing here? Is there something that's holding me back that I don't know about, that the Spirit is not being able to speak to me clearly? Smelling what I'm stepping in this morning? <laughs> God is good. All the time. And all the time. That's right. So you see, the reason the Lord put this on my heart is because we can know everything. We can memorize everything, which is good. But if we do not know the Spirit within us, and we do not hear the Spirit within us, and we don't walk in that power, then we're not fully taking on the mantle of the air. When my son walks around and he says, no, my daddy will do it. If my daddy says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. It's because of the confidence he has. Do we have that confidence? Do we have that confidence? Will I have the boldness, the boldness to walk around and say, oh no, he's more than enough. <laughs> to look at someone, and, and, and Janelle and I have met quite a few people who go through really difficult things. Mm -hmm. Okay, really difficult, no place to live, out on the street, and, and I feel bad that all I can bring them is some pizza. But you know what? The joy wants to get in them too. That spirit wants to get in them too. And when I speak to them, am I speaking like my son would speak to someone else and say, no, 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 my daddy can do it. <laughs> trust me, trust me, my daddy, he can do it. Abba, Father, he can do it. He can do it exceedingly and abundantly beyond anything you could ever hope or imagine, Amen. brother and sister. Amen. Trust in him. And he won't fail you nor forsake you. And that is what makes us effective as Christians. Now, when my son walks up to another kid, they might, they'll probably go, wow, you must really have some faith in your dad. I, at least I hope he does someday. He's only three now, and now it just sounds like, Transformers! I want to play with the Transformers, Dad! You know, but hopefully when he's older. That's what I want to express to people. My daddy can do it, amen? Just come on up and play for me a little bit. Okay, Angel, that's even better. <laughs> God is good this morning, amen? amen. Yes. Let's pray together. Let's pray.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we cannot say it enough, and I'll never be able to say it enough. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was so not worthy. I was so lost without you. Lord, but you reach down. You reach down into my darkest depths. You reach down when I was lower than I ever thought I could be. And you grabbed my hand and said, Son, you are a beloved son of mine, an heir. Who am I? Who am I? But God, you are so good to me. Thank you, Lord. Right now, if you feel on your heart a pull, if the Holy Spirit is right now with every head bowed and every eye closed, if the Holy Spirit right now is pulling at your heart, all I want you to do, whether you, you have already prayed this prayer or not, it doesn't matter. If you feel the pull of the Holy Spirit on your heart, all I want you to do right now is slip up a hand and we're going to pray a prayer with you today. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Let's, let's pray together, and I'd like everyone to repeat after me with every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus you, are the only way. you are the only way, and I love you. And I love you. I'm, willing I'm willing to surrender, to surrender everything, everything for you. Please, Please fill my heart. Fill my heart. Let, your love Let your love be stronger, be stronger than, everything than everything else in my life. Help me to hear you more than I hear any other voice. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.